Hello and welcome to week 66 of the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes account, the Executor Rush account, the original Executor Rush account. As you can see, still documenting everything that's going on. Have a good stuff. As far as the Jabba the Hutt journey is concerned, that is our current journey goal. We've got Chrysant and Greedo and Aura Singh all up to gear 12 right now. We're waiting on some Cairo techs for them. Uh, we've also got Boosh, Leia, and Skiffguard Lando coming up as our other characters that require Cairo techs before Relics. Uh, we still need some more shards for Skiffguard Lando, but we're not too far off. Jawa is the one that I am the most concerned about. I'm hoping to get Jawa exclusively through Galactic War Rewards and Bronzium card rewards, but it's looking very slow. If we have a quick look, when I started this farm, we had Jawa at eight shards out of 100 at week 58. We are eight weeks ahead, and now it's 36 out of 100. So they're coming in very slowly. There is still hope. We're also getting Mob Enforcer shards from Galactic War, uh, that should be fine. I can always just buy one Cantina shipment for, of her if need be, but we're good to go. However, we're not actually working on Jabba the Hutt right now. Sadly, with the new raid, we are in a bit of a bind. My Naboo, my Naboo raid teams are exceptionally lackluster. In fact, let's go to the Naboo raid right now. Look at units required. As you can see, the, I only have one gear 12 in the entire list, and that's R2-D2, who doesn't do much for this raid. I don't think I've seen a single video about the raid that mentions R2-D2 in any way, shape, or form. So that doesn't help us. As a result of this, we are going to be working on these two teams going forwards. I want to get my Gungans up to Relic 5. That way they'll be ready for Jar Jar Binks the next time he comes around because I'm not going to be able to get him done uh, by August whatever date that is. And then I'll do the B2 Super Raid Droid team uh, with Sidious and Darth Maul. I may... and Stap. I may Relic up Sidious and Darth Maul for Sith Eternal Emperor requirements but I'll probably just take all these guys to gear 12. I may not even build the second team. If I can get my Gungans up and running and I get a decent score with just the Gungans, I may just stick to just the Gungans. The reason I've picked the B2 team is that all but Stap, who can be replaced for Droidecker, are requirements for some journey or other. So I can get my general skywalker requirements up and i can get my sith eternal emperor requirements up and i mean even by extension my leviathan requirements and then stap is just very good for the general grievous team and i want to get general grievous up after jabba as we can see i already had the gungans set up for post jabba team to work on so we're just moving them a little forwards. I wanted to work on the Tuscans as well. Chupio to finish off my CLS team. General Grievous was also a team I wanted to work on. And Stap was in that list. So we've got that. A Sith Triumvirate would be nice. It's mostly just the two Mandalorians in that team. Uh, ISC and Gar Saxon that I was looking at uh, gearing up, and then the Ufus, the Unaligned Force user team with Sir Junda. But the the these bottom three teams were not a guarantee. These top four lots of teams were definitely going to happen after Jabba the Hutt. So now that we're putting Jabba the Hutt on hold. Everything's slowing down a lot. I've already got my boss Nass geared up to gear 11. We're just waiting for that final star, which is pretty far away. 
And we can put on the last two pieces of gear here and then get the Chirotex up. I only have Tarples right now at seven stars and he'll be my next unit to gear up as well. All my Chirotex will be going into Tarples. He's just about to get uh, a Chirotech piece. Seeing as I can take him to Relic straight away as I already have him on seven stars. The Phalanx is farming up pretty quickly and the Boomadier is also farming up pretty quickly. I've only just started Boss Nass as I was putting him off because I wasn't expecting to have to farm him until after I unlocked Jabba the Hutt. But here we are. As far as everything else is concerned, Conquest, what a fun time. I touch on it every, every month. We're not having a great time in Conquest this time around. I'm not getting great data discs. And it's just kind of a bit meh. Everything seems to be stronger than usual. The challenges are um, more achievable than ever for me. I just happen to farm up the right characters at the right time, but I don't think I'll do as well as last month's Conquest, where I did manage to get the second, the third last crate, I think, which got me a bunch of Bronzium wiring. As far as our relic material is concerned, we're going to have to increase that now that we're farming up. Now that we're farming up the Gungans, but we're sitting pretty on Bronzium wiring at the moment. So it's not so bad. It's nowhere near where we need to be. Same with the Carbonite circuit boards, but we're all right. We're sitting on 20K crystals right now as well. So I may purchase the relic packs that come out at the end of Conquest, I think it is, and get a few more Carbonite circuit boards, a few more Bronzium wiring from those. We shall see. Light side battles as far as farming is concerned. We are still, after all this time, farming up the BTLB Y-Wing Star Fighter. So close to being done now. Not that much longer to go. As you may have guessed, we're farming up the Gungans and also Skiffguard Lando. Then everything else goes into our shock prod node. On dark side, I've just started farming up boss Nass. We're farming Embo. And we're also farming up Ray's Millennium Falcon, which is also finally halfway to its final star. It has been an incredibly long farm and just not a satisfying one. I won't be using that ship very much and... It's just not an incredible ship in an incredible fleet, which is a bit of a shame. In the, sh the ship, the fleet battle nodes, we are doing the Gungan first. Then I move on to the Thai Echelon because I want to get that up for when I finally have the finalizer up and running. And we're doing Lando's Millennium Falcon, which used to be well ahead of Ray's Millennium Falcon, but the drop rates have been absolutely garbage lately. If I get a bunch of bonus energy for fleets through the online store and stuff like that, I put any excess into the Marauder, but I do not refresh my fleet energy at all. I just get what I get and spend what I spend. As far as the fleet arena is concerned, I have been consistently getting first in fleet arena for the past two or three weeks now. I finally figured out a, it feels like 80% counter chance to mirror matches of, of the executor, the seven star executor. Our first place, uh, or, the, or at least the guy that's first place before me, Ray, has a relic nine Piet, which is not here, has a relic nine Piet. So their executor is faster than mine, but I found out if you don't barrage the razor crest uh first so normally the, the attack order is they barrage your razor crest which gives turn meter to the hound's tooth instead of attacking the round razor crest with hound's tooth and trying to put a breach on it that then gives their hound's tooth turn meter and lets them taunt meaning we can no longer target the razor crest I instead breach the Hound's Tooth so it doesn't get bonus turn meter. I can then use the Executor's vo the Mass Assist attack on the Razor Crest, hoping for a mark, but it doesn't always come off. 
And then my first reinforcement is my Ebon Hawk, which as you will see right here, is at seven stars, but level one behind me, and both of the crew are also level one. We just get the chaff out there, guaranteeing that I get the bounty contract fulfilled first for the executor and get the Death Star ultimate off before the opponent gets the Death Star ultimate off. Sometimes you get really unlucky with a couple of dodges or some really unlucky targeting by the opposition. They take out your Razor Crest really quickly and then you kind of just fall apart. But it feels like since I've started using that particular strategy, 80% of the time I get the win against the same relic or higher relic uh, piets. I haven't had to go up against higher relic uh, bosks or IG-88s or Cad Banes or Beskar Armor Mandos yet, so that strategy may change. But as it stands right now on, on level pegging, on even footing, we get the wins. You may have also guessed that I'm farming up the Stap in Cantina Battles, which has pretty bad drop rates, but I think that's just because it's unaccelerated. I still think I've gotten more Stap than I have Plo Koon's Fighter, but because I've got Plo Koon's Fighter maxed out, every additional blueprint I get for there is Shard Shop Currency, which we're always happy to get. I have not farmed slicing material in a really long time. I'm just trying to get the number of mods I have with five or more speed just increased. I farmed crit damage for a while. I farmed offense for a while. I'm currently farming crit chance mods, seeing as that seemed like one of the more useful tubes piece sets for the Jabba the Hutt team that's that I was planning on getting, but I may need to pivot now and get some better mod farms for my Gungans to make them a far better team. You may have noticed as well, I don't get a great score in this raid right now. As far as raid rewards are concerned, in this raid we get the 22 mil crate. Hopefully that will increase over the coming month. Uh, we've still got 24 hours. We haven't had many people not attack our best. Our best scores are pretty solid up in the top 10 here, but then it drops off fairly quickly. So if I can start posting, start posting a lot better. Let me just check the difficulty. If I have all Relic 5s, I can potentially max that out and get a million, which would be awesome. So if everyone can do that, get one or more teams up and running, we'll be in a pretty happy spot. I haven't relicked anything in ages because I've been saving up and saving up. I'm really good. Oops. I'm really good for battle computers right now. I have just been getting battle computers up the wazoo. I know I need 400 battle computers to unlock the Jabba the Hutt requirement. So I won't be, I won't stop getting battle computers in place of shock prods just yet because there are still more that need to be gotten but the shock prods are really holding me back at the moment it should level itself out eventually but at the moment i am very ahead with battle computers that i believe is all i've got to say for this month's update not a lot has happened. I've gotten a few relics, a few requirements for Jabba, but like I said, we're putting Jabba on hold for probably two months, I want to say, it's going to take to get all those Cairo techs up and running. So, ow, but pretty exciting stuff. Pretty exciting stuff. We'll get Jar Jar Binks's requirements done and we can move back. I also don't know if I've mentioned it in an update video yet, but I finally unlocked Kiadi Mundi, who is usable in this raid, and if I can get him one more star, is good on a Galactic Republic Jedi team in the raid as well. So that's pretty exciting. He also requires Kyra attacks, but you can't win them all. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any more questions 
comments, you want an update uh, on your account or a roster review, sure to whack those down below and catch the Twitch stream sometimes or the YouTube stream. I stream on both at the same time. Every day at the moment, I'm streaming the progress of a new free-to-play account that I've been playing. There will be an update video on that on the channel in the coming days. See you later, and thanks for watching! And scene, alright, the YouTube video's over, gang. The YouTube video's over.